Hey folks, the Audacity here. Um, I've got a new tutorial for you. Uh, some guys had asked a question if it was possible to do a freeze frame sequence inside Final Cut Pro X. And at first I'm like, uh, yeah, right. But I actually realized that there is a way to do it. Um, a little bit complicated, a little bit roundabout, but in the end it actually works out pretty good. Um, but there are certain restrictions when it comes to doing this one correctly. Um, one, your camera has to be sitting still when we do something like this. Um, it cannot be moving because there is no motion tracking that I can think of in Final Cut Pro X. Maybe there is. I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, and two, it needs to be against like the sky or a uh, bright background so that your actor can be distinguished. Um, or you can do it against something else probably. I have not yet tested it. So I'm gonna come over here to, this is basically, this is one I already made here in Final Cut. Uh, you guys probably saw me do one of these here earlier. Um, now we'll do our version a little bit slower just because it looks better that way. But anyway, so let me delete all these here. Yeah, those are gone. We don't need these photos anymore and they might just get, they'll get in our way anyway. All right, so we got, our video here. Um, let's play till we get the right in and out points. Bam. And right there, that looks good. All right, so we press E to add to timeline. And uh, this was framed in 60 frames per second. Um, sorry, 60 frames per second. And uh, so I can slow that down to 50% easily without uh, losing any frames of sorts. Um, and probably actually I'm going to reduce it down to about 42%, um, <coughs> excuse me, 40% is what you can do to get a normal 24 frames per second look if you wanted. Uh, I like to go a little bit higher just to make sure the motion is nice and smooth, but <coughs> excuse me, uh, that's just what it is. So uh, we'll let that finish compiling-ish here. All right, so now let's make sure this play is good. Good, nice and slow. Good, even. All right, I like that. Um, see if I can make this any smaller. Oh, no, that's okay. All right, so, uh, and you can also notice my friend in the background there. Woohoo! Anyway, um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take this and we're gonna look for specific frames that we want um, to be taken out because the best way to do it is to f take a basically a screen capture of it. Um, so I'm going to take one right here because that looks like a cool spot. Now, it's important that when you're doing this, um, you look at the frame time here so that you know where to place it next time. So this is at one second and the 26th frame. So I'm going to go over here to share. I'm going to save this current frame that it's on right now as a PNG image. And then I'm going to name it frame one dash 26 for some reason they you can't use colons in um, naming of things like I could type in a colon right here and it gives me the dash I don't know why but whatever um, so I'm just gonna say that to the desktop so I can grab it later um, there we go and then I'm gonna go a little bit further ahead here I want something where he's nearly vertical Ah, uh, let's go there. That looks pretty cool. That's 252 right there. So second two, two, and then, oh, 52, 252, okay. So we put that in there. Waiting, gotcha. All right, we'll do one more just for good measure. Obviously you could do more, but let's just do it this way. And the next one looks like it's going to be at 3.30. And then name it a current, uh, name it well, I guess. The key for everything is to name it well so you know where it goes or what it's doing or everything like that. And then it keeps you a lot more organized later on. So um, we got those three frames. Uh, they're on the desktop. So I'm going to go over here to file, uh, import files. Now they're going to import them as photos, so that's fine to, for me. 
Uh, we'll put those up here. Now, uh, we'll take this and, well, actually, we're, um, we're currently at 3.30, so let's grab frame 3.30 and we'll whoop, undo. Go back to 3.30. All right, we'll take this and then you press Q to append to where your cursor thing is. So I just put it on top of the other setup there. So we'll go back here to frame 252, as it says right here. A lot easier that way than having to write it down somewhere or something like that. So 252 right there. We'll grab a chunk of that. Q, add it on. Then the last one is 126. Right there. So bam, Q again. Now, um, with pictures, it's easy. You can drag out to the normal length of your footage, um, or photos can last as long as you want them to. Uh, so that makes it easier, not having to worry about lengths or anything like that. So we'll drag those out to get them to the, roughly the same length. This is just rough right now. Of course, you would try and figure out the exact edge. Um, all right, there we go. So now we got this, but once it renders, you'll notice that the freeze frame that's on the top here uh, conquers all the rest of sorts, depending on how you look at it. Um, and so if you look at it here, uh, let's get some scrubbing in. That'll help. Um, so then we go and bam, we got a freeze frame. Like, oh man, that's not working right. Well, don't panic. That's, um, we're still good. We're gonna take this photo. We're gonna go down here to the bottom of the info pane here. So click I to grab the info pane. Uh, go down to compositing right here at the bottom. Uh, blend mode, you wanna, uh, you can do multiple things and you'll have to mess with this uh, depending on what backdrop you put. Some backdrops just won't work, I'm gonna warn you. But uh, we're gonna do darken. And so if you see there, with some audio, some scrubbing, it looks like whoop, it passes right through them kind of thing. So now we're just gonna go here, also select darken, and go here and select darken as well. Oh, darken, there we go. All right, so that actually works pretty good, um, but we're gonna have a problem uh, that you'll see here soon. This bush right here, really dark, and look, in fact, the cursor's in the right spot there. Um, he hides behind this bush. And so you're like, oh shoot, I just, I can't do it that way. Well, not technically true. You can still get it done. Uh, that will be going over here to effects and search mask. It's actually one of the normal ones that you can get here in the, um, it comes with Final Cut Pro. So I'm gonna drag and drop the mask onto every single one of those. I'm gonna go here to the first one and we see where the dude is. I'm just gonna move him out of the way. Um, we just need to get basically a normal square, even though you can't see it right now, but if you do it like this, see, it'll like cut him off. I'm just gonna get a rough shape around him so that any other motion won't interfere sort of thing. Uh, so we'll just put it like that because it won't cut off the ones below it. We'll grab the next mask and do the same thing. My friend Sean here being ridiculously awesome with parkour genius or something like that or just awesomeness in general, that too. <clears throat> and then go down to the last one here. Um, also, we'll go around his head here with the four corner mask. Um, bam, bam. Oh, not cut him off there. Him and his crazy hair. All right, so then we'll let it compile here for a quick second. And then we're basically done. That's really all you have to do. Super simple. Um, you just can't do this in other projects when the thing is moving or there's a difficult background or, uh, or I'm sorry, camera's moving or difficult background uh, to be able to do the certain type of compositing mode. But here in the end, it actually looks really good. I mean, bam, bam, bam. And this can obviously be applied to a lot of different things. Uh, I have not yet tried it on different skies or other things like that, so that is a warning. I'm just, I'm not sure what's going on with that. 
uh, you'll have to test and let me know. Uh, send, put it as a video response if you can. That would make things a lot easier for me. Uh, and then I can check them out, see how they did, and actually put anything you do as a video response. I want to see it. I want to see what you guys do. Uh, also, uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, please comment, like, uh, subscribe to my channel. But if you have the questions, uh, you can send them to my Twitter at um, the Bodacity. Should be on the screen right now. And also, my email um, is the Bodacity at me.com. Yes, it's an Apple email. All right. So anyway, um, that's I believe that's everything, folks. Again, please remember to rate, comment, subscribe or I guess like or dislike, whatever, choose, it's fine, I would like the likes, anyway, I uh, just hope you guys enjoy, and uh, let me know if I can help you with anything else, see you later guys.